Okay. Now, Sri Sadish Chandra Misra. Thank you, Vice Chairman, sir, for giving this opportunity to speak on this uh, very important bill. But I must admit, uh, in the very beginning, constitutional amendment. Uh, and uh, but I must admit that when I stand to speak, I know uh, we have em heard eminent uh, people like uh, Sri Kapil Sibal, a very eminent lawyer, Sri Arun Jaitley ji, and there are other eminent lawyers more eminent than uh, I can. Uh, I would like to be somewhere near, but I can't be there. The Mr. Ravi Shankar Prashad ji, Mr. Ram Jethamla ji, Mr. Uh, Narivan ji, and we have uh, uh, we were having. Paraswan ji, we had other uh, lawyers who are not here at present. You are also eminent lawyer. But I have little experience also on this field, I must say. <laughs> and uh, having a 37 years experience on the as a lawyer, and uh, having some experience of the other side, or I can say uh, on the, uh, not uh, having been a judge or having sat on the seat of judge, but uh, being uh, belonging to a family where my father was chief justice, my real uncle was a judge, my real brother was a judge. I, as on the uh, legal side, uh, I was. I also know about the bar associations because uh, being secretary of the bar of the High Court Bar Association, then being a member bar council of UP, and then being chairman bar council of UP, and therefore seeing the uh, uh, the system of the whole of UP where we have the maximum number of lawyers as on date, and uh, being the advocate general of UP thereafter got the opportunity of being the advocate general of UP also. So some experience, not as much experience as the uh, eminent persons have spoken earlier. But I personally feel that this uh, bill, which uh, I, uh, when I heard uh, Mr. Arun Jaitley ji, I, was, I thought, that I, I, I must admit that he and Mr. Kapil Sibbal were on the same lines. And they spoke almost uh, uh, on the point that there is a necessity, there was a necessity, and there is an extreme necessity to have a change in the system and uh, have a judicial commission. Uh, but at the end, I, uh, when I heard uh, Mr. Arun Jaitley, I was slightly, I must, uh, with all respects uh, to Mr. Arun Jaitley ji, slightly disappointed when at the end he said that no, uh, we should uh, defer it because I think it should go for further examination. Uh, when uh, uh, earlier, in his earlier speech he said, earlier talk when he was speaking, he said, that I, we brought it, you opposed it. Now, since you have, uh, the impression comes that now you have brought it, so that we have to. Now, why can't both of them be together? And uh, if uh, it, it may not be that since you have brought, therefore I should say that it should be deferred. And when I brought the same thing, you said that it should be deferred. And therefore, it should always remain in a deference. And we have already witnessed that it is almost now uh, not 20 years, but I must say it is more than 22 years when it was conceived that a judicial commission should be there. And why I'm saying 22 years, I would say on the basis of the uh, judgment of the Honorable Supreme Court itself, where the Supreme Court, in fact, in the case, uh, when it referred the three, after the 1983 judgment of the S.P. Gupta's case, the matter went before three honorable judges and, and on a different uh, matter, it was a transfer case, then it came again. When it was referred in 1991, in the Supreme Court Records Association case and Subhash Sharma's case in 1991. It was referred to the larger bench to look into the veracity of 1983 judgment of the S.P. Gupta's case. Now, in that very judgment, if we see where it was reference, uh, reference was only on two points, and uh, not uh, with respect to the entire issues, but uh, then ultimately the Supreme Court took up the matter and entered into various other issues which were not even referred. But in, in the judgment of Subhash uh, Sharma at paragraph 50, I would read only five lines from that, where it said, it is not a power or right to appoint judges. It is essentially a discharge of constitutional trust of which certain constitutional functionaries are collectively re repositories. Then in paragraph 50, they say, we are aware of the position. Now, this is very important because when we are, today we are not considering the accountability of the judges. We must keep in mind that there is a difference and distinction between the accountability and with respect to the appointment, though they are maybe interlinked because if we have nine proper judges, then they will be more accountable. If they are not proper judges, they will not be accountable. But uh, the, uh, in para 50 of that judgment, the Honorable Supreme Court, while making reference in 1991 said, took uh, notice of the National Judicial Commission. They said, we are aware 
of the position that the setting up of the National Judicial Commission through a constitutional amendment is in contemplation. We are in 2013 now. In the event, in the event of the amendment being carried and a National Judicial Commission being set up, the correctness of the ratio in S.P. Gupta's case of the status of the Chief Justice of India may not be necessary to be examined. In view of the fact that by amendment, the Chief Justice of India would become the Chairman of the Commission. Now, this was, uh, and uh, then thereafter they say, in case the Commission is not constituted, the two questions indicated above, which are of vital importance uh, to the efficient functioning of the judicial system in the country, require consideration, and there is an element of Im immediacy in the matter. So therefore, the Honorable Supreme Court, right from beginning itself, was conceiving a judicial commission. And that was in 1991, when they referred the matter uh, to the nine judges. And uh, the uh, first uh, judgment came, and thereafter, a presidential reference, and then the second judgment came, where the collegium system, which was earlier with three judges, was increased to five judges. A memorandum was prepared, and under, the, uh, judgment, uh, under that judgment, by the government of India, by the law ministry, which was sent to all the chief justices, that uh, the procedure with respect to the appointment, which was never followed. And why I'm saying it was never followed? Because we need to have an independent judiciary. The necessity is to have an independent judiciary. And uh, as has been said by uh, almost all the speakers, because it is one of the main pillars of democracy and plays a very impo important role in ensuring and securing the social justice, which is <coughs> enshrined in the preamble of the Constitution. Now, if we see the preamble of the Constitution, it says we will secure uh, social justice uh, uh, to all citizens of the country. Now, how are we securing social justice? Dr. Baba Sahib Bhim Rao Ambedkar, when he, the chief architect of the Constitution, father of the Constitution, when he framed this Constitution, he never conceived that there will be a system of the appointment of the judges where judges will completely, the appointment will be in such a manner that there will be no chance of a social uh, 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 through the judiciary of securing social justice. And why I'm saying so? Because as on date, because of the present system which is there, the, uh, uh, so far as the scheduled caste and scheduled tribes uh, are concerned, they, they are the uh, most weakest section of the uh, uh, society. And uh, almost 33 uh, uh, crores uh, and above in this country. But from where should they get justice? From which corner? If there is no one to understand their problem, their issue, as on date, uh, every time I've been raising this in this house, that 160 strength of the High Court uh, of Allahabad, and out of which 80 always remain, uh, remains vacant, that is something different. But out of 80 also, we don't have a single scheduled caste judge even today in the High Court. So if there is, this is the situation, how uh, the social justice will be ensured. And, and unless we ensure the appointments to be me made in a procedure where the voice uh, is there, that look here, kindly look into this aspect. I know, I've seen the circular. Being the Advocate General, at one point of time, I'd, I had persuaded the then uh, Chief Justice and the uh, Collegium members meeting personally and saying that at least send one name. And uh, uh, with great difficulties, we could get three names sent and out of which two were then turned down by the higher uh, collegium uh, when it reached the Supreme Court. And one who was appointed, unfortunately, he expired uh, uh, in a, after the appointment uh, a couple of years, in two years' time. And uh, thereafter, not even a single name was sent. We made all attempts, all, uh, uh, all possible uh, attempts uh, as per the collegium, as per the circular, which has been issued by the, and the law, Honorable Law Minister would know it better because the circular says, that the uh, chief minister uh, can also, even the judgment says, that he can at least uh, refer to the name. Now, we did not, the chief minister did not uh, refer a name. Uh, we uh, took care that no name is sent, but a request was made uh, when the government was there in the five years of Bahujan Samaj Party at that time, earlier also in, uh, in 2003, 2005, four, when I was the Advocate General, that at least sent two names, one name. If you are sending 100 names, at least include one, but not even one. So the system is uh, not only failing because of this reason, there are other reasons also, as has been said uh, repeatedly, that uh, we need uh, judges. Uh, this, this bill should not be confused with respect to the other bill. As Mr. Jaitley said, uh, he rightly said, that there has to be an accountability of the judges also. 
I agree, 100 percent. And I agree with that, that there should be accountability and some provision at one point of time with respect to judging the accountability of the judges also and some procedure with respect to that. But we cannot include that in this bill. As soon as we'll include that in this bill, it was uh, uh, tried to be included earlier and it failed. Because as soon as it is included, there will be several questions in dependence of judiciary. You are interfering in the independence <coughs> of judiciary. You can't interfere in the independence of judiciary. Therefore, uh, this, uh, uh, I would say that it has been very uh, rightly, it has been separated at this moment. It can be brought separately. It can be thought separately. It can be discussed separately. And thereafter, it can be brought. But at this point of time, we should only concentrate on with respect to the appointment of judges. And when we consider with respect to the appointment of judges, it is not uh, far uh, overreaching the uh, judicial uh, uh, dictums which are there or the judgments which the Honorable Supreme Court has. They have taken the collegium. There is no provision in the article. When I read article again and again, uh, uh, with respect to the appointment, both the articles, they don't refer to any collegium. They refer that uh, with the consultation of the Chief Justice. Here it is reverse. The Chief Justice will not consult uh, the uh, President, but he will communicate the President that, look here, I have selected so-and-so. Now, what is the procedure of selection? It is incomplete. It is uh, uh, to totally non-transparent. It is not known to one uh, except the persons who are members of the Collegium. The Collegium has been framed. Three judges sit together. Five judges sit together. They, they sit together. They decide. We know. Whoever is in the profession knows. Others also know that how, when the Collegium meets, the members now decide that the, this is my list, this is your list, this is, now let us decide. If the 10 names have to be sent, we'll choose three each. Now, is this the system? The judge has to be appointed on the basis of his qualities. What is he, because he is to discharge his duties of even uh, with respect to the, uh, enforcing the fundamental rights of uh, the citizen of 125 crores people of this country. They are putting their everything into their hands. And they have taken, they have become supreme, as has been rightly pointed out by the leader of the opposition, that whatever, only God is above them, no one else. So once you have given so much power and they have taken all that power and they have started to decide even that how many and uh, only interested in the PILs mostly because they, they, they can decide whether there should be a Nali, there should be a Panala, there should be a, 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 any, dog. all, everything, whether the dogs should remain in this street or should not remain in the park. Every sort of things which one can imagine, which executive function is there, executive yeah. knows how to deal with them. They have, the, they are the policy makers. Uh, after the policy ma is made here, they are given <coughs> the hands of the executive. The executive has to take action. But now, every action, when we uh, in power in the government, if uh, whichever party may be power in the government in any state or in the center, any decision taken, they are always thinking that this decision first has to be got approved by the judges, if it is uh, it maybe the High Court or maybe the Supreme Court. Now, if a policy being framed, they, then they should, uh, there should be a method, there should be a decision, common decision, that any policy being made for the development or for any purpose of the, or for any work, it should first be referred to the Supreme Court or, uh, and to the High Court for their approval, and then the action should be taken. Because if it is not done, then the ministers may go to jail, the uh, 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 officers may go to jail. Who is going to work? Who is going to sign the files? So all this is already happening. The, the judges' qualities which were required for the appointment, that is, was the basic thing which should have been considered. It was, uh, the judge should be of uh, unimpeachable in integrity. He should possess high integrity, honesty, skill, high order of emotional stability, firmness, serenity, legal soundness, ability, and endurance. Now, there should be personal qualities also which should be taken into consideration, which are not considered. And that is moral vigor, moral vigor of the person concerned who is being appointed, ethical firmness of impervisions of, uh, to corrupting or venal influences, humility and lack of affiliations, judicial temperament, which is and zeal and capacity to work and give judgments and decide the matters. Now, today we find judges are appointed, but they also don't feel that whether the judge's judgment is going to be right or wrong. So therefore, even the judgments are kept for years together and they are not delivered. The judge, while giving the judgment, is not able to judge that whether the judgment would be right or wrong. So in these circumstances, we have to keep into consideration that the appointment of the judge for this, if a judicial commission is framed, 
they, it is not entering into the independence of the judiciary. I do not agree that by uh, making an appointment, uh, judicial commission, there will be any interference in the independence of judiciary. The judiciary, the Supreme Court, as I read, had all, already conceived this. Only they want is that the chief justice, the chief justice of India. Please I, look I'm at seeing, the display seeing, board also. I'm seeing, I, I'll. I know, I know. No, if you'll say, I know I'll you are, No, no, I know you are a veteran. And uh, you no, are no. an uh, erudite law no, no, lawyer, I'll, I'll, so I'll, I am not controlling you. I, 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 but see, keep. I have no inhibitions about myself. I had conceded in the very beginning. No, no, please. Wait yeah, yeah. I, I have, that is why I am. Give a little latitude. That today. is what I am doing. This is our request. <laughs> that is what I am doing. Give a little doing. latitude today. That is what we I am doing. We have to discuss these issues. That is Give what I am doing. Give a little latitude today. Go out. I am doing exactly that. If you can, this is an important discussion. Please allow them time. Yeah, that yeah, is what I am doing. Yes. Oh. It's for the house, I have no problem. No, please, I would say... Please continue. I would say that it is not that uh, nobody falters. In the judgment, when I uh, uh, read all the judgments, all the judgments with respect to judges' case, the what the judges have said there, they said you cannot make a system where the Chief Justice of India's powers are uh, subdued. To anyone else and chief justice of india uh, has to be kept uh, as at the pivotal uh, thing and but in this uh, uh, I, I when i see the amendment that has been taken care the chief justice of india is the chairman he he will uh, chair and he's the chairman and after that the collegium is also there he they they have a collegium of three judges so two judges are there already what has been added is two eminent jurists which will again be with respect, uh, on behalf of the Chief Justice of India and the Honorable Prime Minister and the Leader of the Opposition. Now, uh, again, the uh, Chief Justice of India is there in this decision uh, in taking uh, procedure. So, uh, the, uh, except that the Law Minister would be there, the Law Minister should be there. He is responsible. He is accountable. He is account accountable to the whole country. People will ask him, why three, three crore cases are pending in this country? What about the poor persons who are going to the courts every day and as rightly Rajiv Shuklaji said, Tariq pe Tariq, Tariq pe Tariq, what about them? How, uh, uh, of course, I don't agree on everything with Rajiv Shuklaji said because he said uh, this is a debate where only lawyers uh, are likely to speak. I am speaking. He forgot that who, uh, who, uh, what is his uh, um, past. He, he belongs to a category which is above all and that is uh, the, uh, he belongs to the media. <laughs> and he, he started from, he's not yeah. here, but he, uh, with, who judge everyone? Media. Who judge yeah. me? Who judge judges? Uh, uh, no. Judges judge. fear them. They conduct trials also. And, Misraji, and not only media this, conduct trials also. Not only this, they, they judge everything. They judge the whole country uh, and the whole world. And, and everybody is feared of them, even we. I know what I'm speaking is being judged. And, and uh, they are judging what I am speaking and uh, what, uh, what should be taken out. And, and they also give the judgments. And their judgments, their judgments are not delayed. Their judgments come immediately. As soon as we go out, we know the judgment is there. And, 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 and here the judgments come after years together. So Rajiv Shuklaji is not only that, he has another experience. He is a son of a lawyer, a son in law of a lawyer. And not only this, brother-in-law uh, of a lawyer, a very eminent lawyer of this country, who is here. So, so Rajiv Shuklaji is all in one, and he's also the minister of this. Uh, no, so therefore, when he pointed fingers to the lawyers only being there to speak, I could I could not agree with him, and I hope uh, he would have been here. He would have uh, uh, heard this. But I would say that while saying this, I would say that even even the judges who gave the judgment. The Chief Justice of India, the then Chief Justice of India, Justice J. Swarma, what he said later on, that is very uh, uh, important. When he, the system was framed, but they were not knowing. They, they did they said it will be for the better. As Mr. Uh, Jaitley pointed out, what happened in 1970s, mid-1970s, and it, uh, ripples started, and ultimately this judgment came, and everything was taken by them. Judges started appointing judges, and in a manner which was totally non-transparent, non and uh, sitting uh, in uh, tight chambers amongst themselves, not even consulting the bar association, not even consulting the lawyers, not consulting anyone, and deciding on their own. But even Justice J.S. Verma, he said later on that indeed, even members of the majority in the second judge's case, notably the late Chief Justice J.S. Verma, have said that if they had the benefit of foresight, they would not have created such a body. Justice, this, these are uh, what Justice J.S. Verma said. So we have to see 
that a system which is not transparent, a system which has no participation of the bar, bar which is the main, uh, every time we say there are uh, 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 a chariot, two wheels, one is the judiciary, the other is the bar. Now where is the bar consultation? Bar don't even know. They come to know later on when uh, the damage is done. They come to know when the list is already sent to the center or to the chief, just, uh, to the chief minister and then to the uh, center for the purpose of appointment. The bar's consultation is not there. Bar's views are not there. And I am saying this, is, it's an important thing because it is very recently, uh, very recently, uh, the, uh, it has been seen that this tyranny of secrecy has affected largely the judiciary. And uh, uh, Madras High Court, um, uh, the Honorable uh, Law Minister must have received the, the Madras High Court when 10 judges' name was sent. They, uh, the entire 1,000 uh, lawyers of the Bar Association, they signed a letter and they sent a letter saying that this, the appointments are absolutely, uh, which are, do not fall into any of the categories worth being considered. Their names were sent for the appointment. The Punjab and Haryana High Court, their Bar Association has said in June 2013, they have also uh, sent a representation against the reference of the names. We, uh, every day, suddenly we come to know that these names are, have been sent and we just sit as a lawyers in the Bar Association and get astonished. Oh, this name has gone, that name is gone. And as uh, it was said that uh, the lawyers who, who would otherwise suit the best, they, even if they are considered, they don't want to become a judge because they don't want to fall into that category. Today you are uh, considering the name, you call him, you ask his consent to be given in writing, and then you say, no, sorry, uh, we have received some information later on, and therefore we are uh, not appointing you. So therefore, I would say that in this case, the, in this, with respect to this constitutional bill, it is no necessity of sending it to selection. Why I'm saying so? Because the procedure which will be followed, the, it is the constitutional amendment it will be considered here, if after being passed here, it will go to the Lok Sabha. After the Lok Sabha, it will go to the various states. And after it is ratified, it will uh, then go to the president. In the meantime, the other bill, I agree. I fully agree with Mr. Ravi Shankar Prashadji and uh, uh, Mr. Jaitley that uh, the objection raised by Mr. Ravi Shankar Prashad, I agree to that extent that the other bill, which is there, should be sent to a select committee or maybe a, a standing committee. Uh, which may be decided because there are several things which I also have certain <laughs> suggestions which I would like to give okay. uh, with respect to the modalities yes. which are to be there. Yes. But but I'll just take two minutes, one minute more. <laughs> but uh, this bill should not be because as it has been assured by the uh, law minister and that would should would be the normal thing also without his assurance also unless there is a procedure laid down for appointment under the bill, the president would not sign the constitutional amendment. And I'm sure the government would not even send it for him unless they frame that and get it passed from this house. Both, the, both I, I, I would like the Honorable okay. Law Minister to give this statement okay. that the, the, both the things will be ultimately sent together for the assent and then only they will be made. Okay. And if this is uh, assured, then I'm sure what uh, Mr. Okay. Uh, the objection which has been raised by Mr. Ravi Shankar Prashadji would be uh, met uh, on that okay. issue. With this, I... Uh, Thank, you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.